welcome back to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael, and today we're looking at Life of Pi, Still in the Pacific Ocean, chapter 47 through 53. And man, these, oh, these chapters are intense. Uh, they give me some goosebumps. Starts off with the zebra still being alive. Uh, that's incredible, man. It, it's been dropped onto this boat with broken legs. It's been half eaten, and it's still alive. It eventually dies uh, kind of in the middle of the day, but oh, Pi is really shocked that it's able to live so long. Um, we see orange juice and um, orange juice uh, and the hyena actually have a little bit of a battle. After the zebra dies, uh, the hyena starts to get crazy again and it goes to attack orange juice and the orange juice goes boom and slams its head on the ground and uh, the hyena ends up backing away. Now, we get a little bit of the story um, of Orange Juice's life uh, because Orange Juice started off as a pet. It was a little baby orangutan, it was a pet, it was nice, but then as it grew up it became too strong, maybe too tough, and they left it out in the wilderness. Or that happens to many pets um, in India, especially like um, not regulated ones or um, like things that aren't like dogs and cats uh, but orange juice um, wasn't part of those left behinds and it ended up in the zoo well even though orange juice was able to defend herself actually um, Pi doesn't think that she's going to be able to survive no matter how strong um, or orange juice is hyena is a predator um, orange juice eats fruit, so it's not thinking, um, where can I hurt this guy to kill him? Uh, where can I um, find the weak point to, um, to defeat the hyena? The hyena, on the other hand, is a predator, so it's looking for ways of how can I kill this orangutan. That doesn't quite work in the same way as the orangutan is thinking. So the orangutan, orange juice, defends itself but it's not really looking to actually like kill um, the hyena. So eventually the hyena comes back and it does um, end up biting onto orange juice and then orange juice is neck and orange juice ends up uh, dying and that's unfortunate. Pi gets so upset with this. He's like, man, okay, I'm just gonna give myself, I'm gonna fight this hyena and I'm gonna die. But as he's rolling over the edge, he sees between his legs this giant lion, lion, tiger, who is Richard Parker. Richard Parker is still there, and he backs up. And now we learn a little bit about Richard Parker's story, how he came um, to the zoo. Well, there was a village. There was a panther. The panther was killing people, and so they hired a hunter. And the hunter had a lamb, it had all these traps and things set up, and it was waiting for the panther. But instead of a panther came a tiger, and a tiger with a cub. The tiger and the cub go get some water, and then they go to the lamb or the sheep, and the hunters, they have a gun to kill, and they have a gun with a dart. So they, poof, they shoot the dart at the tiger, it runs away for a few miles, they find the tiger, and the drug wasn't enough to make the tiger fall asleep completely. So it was still kind of weak, and it was kind of scratching out towards the people. So I guess they had to kill the tiger, and then they found two cubs hiding in the bushes. One of those is Richard Parker. Richard Parker got his name because the hunter's name was um, Richard Parker, and he wanted the tiger's name to be uh and what is that unknown um thirsty he wanted the tiger's name to be thirsty because it was thirsty when he first met it but the guy writing the documents flipped him around and he put the name of the guy as thirsty and the name of the tiger is richard parker and the dad just kept it kind of a funny story well after this um, coming back to the present, uh, Pi actually just kind of gives up. He loses hope. He's like, you know what? 
The hyena, maybe we could have battled it out, but the tiger, I'm done. I've lost all hope. And now that he's lost complete hope, he actually kind of gets some energy back. He's like, man, well, I'm dead anyways, so let me just see what I can do. Let me see what I can make of this. I'm, I'm already dead. I've got that covered. And the fear kind of leaves him, and he starts to explore the boat. He gets this reinvigorized, is what you can say, reinvigorated. Um, to kind of go on and continue. He starts to explore the lifeboat. Um, he gives a lot of details on the lifeboat, but he realizes, man, this is a lifeboat. There's probably actual supplies in here that I can find. He talks about all the measurements and things like that. I'm not gonna get into it, but it was a large lifeboat, 20 feet plus, and it had um, supplies, which ends up inspiring him he is thirsty he needs to find water it's been three days he starts searching around the boat he's so thirsty he's even willing to um, get closer to richard parker and he finds finally this box underneath the tarp in kind of richard parker's area with cans of water unfortunately the cans you can't open them so he's trying to open this can of water. He ends up using one of the hooks from the tarp and pounds it and then um, ends up opening the water and drinking it. He even looks in that container and finds some food biscuits. He eats some food. Oh, he feels so wonderful. I think he actually kind of falls into the chest and uh, falls asleep in there. He wakes up and he realizes he needs to see what he has. He starts to investigate. He's looking around, he has oars, he has life jackets, he has food, he has matches, he has a knife, he has rope, he has all this stuff, a whole list of different things. There's also a tiger, there's also a hyena, and there's one uh, scared boy. Well, he takes all this in. I think he might fall asleep again, I'm not too sure. But as he's looking at all this, he realizes that um, he's not a quitter. He's actually a fighter and he's not going to give up. He has these supplies there. He, he can live for days. He can do this. He's going to overcome the odds. I like what he says in there. I'm going to make the miracles become commonplace. I'm going to make the miracles become the normal. Um, and he's, he's going to, he's going to survive. He realizes he's a fighter at the same time. <laughs> Richard Parker <laughs> realizes the same thing too. He starts to growl, he starts to wake up, the hyena starts to whimper, and Pi realizes, oh my goodness, this tiger is gonna kill me, I need some plan. He starts to grab the oars, and I'm, I'm gonna draw it out here a little bit. Um, this is gonna be a terrible drawing, but this is just my imagination. But he ends up grabbing the oars, okay? He kind of crosses them together, he says it looks like a tic-tac-toe. And then there's a, a, light, a, a buoy. Okay, a buoy is like a floating uh, device. I'm not sure exactly what it looks like. And then he takes uh, life jackets and he puts life jackets um, all around this, uh, these poles. Okay, so he ends up getting these life jackets. He has ropes um, tied through all of this, maybe even has ropes kind of like this, so he can have some space. I, I, there's probably life jackets all in here too, okay? This is a crazy mess. Then he ends up tying the rope whoop, to the boat. <laughs> actually, here, I'll use this picture here. And uh, actually 40 feet out, wow, that's quite far, um, but he wants to be safe. He, so he ends up building all of this. Richard Parker ends up going out killing the hyena and starting to eat the hyena. Um, Richard Parker turns around and sees Pi while he's building this boat and he kind of gets on the tarp a little bit, but he's a little bit afraid. Um, if you think about the boat, I, I'll try and draw it out here, okay? This is a huge boat and there is a tarp covering um, this part here, okay? And underneath, there is where Richard Parker um, has been hiding. Uh, here's some, you know, I think the benches actually go along like this. Here is the zebra. 
and the hyena has been hiding um, right here. Okay, um, these are, uh, man, this is a terrible drawing. Okay, <laughs> that's the hyena. Okay, here's the tiger. And I, I don't know where uh, orange juice is maybe here or something, okay? Pi is on this end here. And he's uh, opened up uh, this part to find, to find the box and treasure box and everything. Okay, so he's got his raft tied to this boat. The raft is small compared to this boat. So part, this picture is not the scale. Um, there's this, um, Richard Parker's like looking straight into Pi's eyes and we don't know what's going to happen, but suddenly this rat, okay, out of nowhere comes running along the side, jumps onto the tarp, okay, jump, runs over to Pi, climbs up him, climbs onto his head and is just like grabbing his hair, okay, <laughs> this oh, crazy scenario. Um, Pi's like, what in the world? Richard Parker's like, what in the world? Uh, I don't, can't remember what happens, but something triggers. Pi grabs the rat off his head. He throws it. This is so funny. He throws it at Richard Parker. Richard Parker just um, takes that rat in one bite. And Pi's like talking about how it's like a meatball and spaghetti and there's a tail. Whatever it is, Richard Parker takes it and he says, okay. And he goes back down, starts eating the hyena. Pi grabs his raft, throws it off, and jumps and gets out of there. Um, let's see. He also... Uh, is, is there one more piece? Oh, okay, no. Um, he also uh, ends up going out into the water. There's some sharks around. He's a little bit scared. Uh, he kind of goes back to the boat. He ends up um, opening up the... the um, oh, it starts raining. It starts raining, so he wants to get his water catcher and something to catch the water and put the water in. So he's getting that out. He gets a blanket. It's a little wet, and he kind of drops the lid, and it goes, Tong! and Richard Parker looks straight at him, and he just goes, Bleak! <laughs> he lets go of the rope, and he falls back onto the raft, and he ends up going back out into the raft. He sets up his water catcher, wraps himself in the cold, wet rain blanket and water splashing up underneath him and uh, he falls asleep and that's where we're going to end Whew, a lot's going on oh my goodness some vocabulary um fistula is like the stomach area stuff which is in the zebra it's all over the place dilated means expanded usually like your eyes the pupil when the doctor flashes a light in there um but the hyena's belly has dilated. It's expanded because it's been eating so much um, zebra. Callus is like rough off part. If you use your hands a lot, the skin gets hard. That's a callus. But it could be like your heart, your calloused heart. You don't feel anymore. Um, you're grumpy. The hyena's callus as it kills maybe orange juice or the zebra. Forlorn is sad. Ferocity is like wild danger. Um, splayed is spread, so when orange juice hits the hyena's head, pong, its legs also splay out. Okay, they kind of flatten and spread out. Empirical is like seeing facts. Uh, it's not just a theory, it's something you've actually seen happen. So it's more of like a real life fact. Delirium is like a, a fever from a dream. I said dream fever here. If you have a fever and you start to imagine things, that's what we call delirium. Imperative is important. It can even be like a rule, priority. Um, something wasn't an imperative, wasn't important. A few more here, sorry. Sustenance is food, things that sustain you. Conundrum is a problem. Reprieve is a rest. Um, poignancy is sadness. Precarious is risky. That leaves me with my discussion question is, man, if you saw this battle going on between the hyena and orange juice, an orange juice who, man, you, you kind of love, you know, she was a, when you were a kid, you were playing around together. She like cleaned your hair and hugged you. And now she's battling with a hyena. Would you try to save her? Or would you like pie? Just look on with horror. 
or something else. And of course, please make your own discussion question. That's all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.